Hey bass lovers, today we're going to talk about my top 10 bass solo hacks. Number one, the band. Make sure the band plays something that inspires you to play at the top of your game. All it takes is really asking them. Most of the time they're pretty okay with playing something that makes the whole band sound better, right? Number two, your sound. In most cases it makes a lot of sense to change up your sound. Boost some mids, or boost the volume, or change to slapping technique, or put in some overdrive. Just something that makes you stick out. Nothing's worse than a bass solo that is just deep frequency rumble. Boring. I hate it so much. And I'm a bass enthusiast. So, change up your sound for your solo. And don't forget to go back. Number three. This is one of my favorite ones. What's your story? Which story are you going to tell with your solo? Every single note should have a meaning. An exercise that I really like doing and I promise you it's gonna take your solo playing to another level. Write a text, write some lyrics for your solo and then play those lyrics word for word. It doesn't have to rhyme, it just has to mean something to you so you can convey an emotional message to your audience. That's how you get them to stick and listen to your solo all the way through and not get bored because they can't relate to what you're playing. So what's your story? Make one up. You don't even have to write it down but definitely have one in your head ready so every note that you play has a meaning. Number four. So number four is really cool and easy. All you have to do is learn the melody of the song. If you're a jazz player, you know that's a total standard technique, but you can do that in any genre. Learn the melody and play it on your instrument. If the solo's short, sometimes you can get away with just playing the melody note by note and you're done with it. Everyone's happy, smiling, listening because they can relate to it. It's in context with the song. If your solo is a little bit longer or you're just bored by playing it note by note, you can do variations or you can just use the melody as a starting point of your solo and from there go off to never never land to places no one has explored before number five use genre specific vocabulary it's the number one hack i can give you to play an authentic solo that relates to what the song is about use the vocabulary of the genre means listening to other artists of that genre transcribing them, play what they play, make their vocabulary your own, put a twist on it and make it your language. Number six, think about how you're gonna end your solo. We already talked about starting your solo with a melody, but ending the solo is equally important if not more because you can play the most amazing solo. If you mess it up the end, if you mess up the end, it's gonna turn to right? So what can you do? The one hack that I can tell you is just have a lick ready for the end of the song and play towards that lick throughout the whole solo. Have that in mind as your goal, as your aim. I'm gonna end with that lick. Everything that I play is gonna work towards that lick. Number seven! Stay with the topic! And that's really easy if you have an ending in place. Remember? Tell a story. Ending is clear. It's easy to come up with a beginning to that story. And hey, if you start with a melody, even easier, you just need a middle bit. So now you take the essence of the ending or the essence of the melody and out of those two, you can form motives and use permutations of these motives to get from the beginning to the ending. You're set up for a brilliant solo. Number eight, start easy. That's actually quite a simple rule. Just Leave yourself some time to get to that end lick. Don't start at 100%. You're not going to be able to keep the suspense all the way through to the end. You're going to lose listeners. and Everyone's going to go to the bar, get a drink and start talking. You don't want that. So start easy and build it up from there. Number nine. Leave space. You might have heard of the analogy of the dripping faucet. If you turn on a faucet and you listen to the shh. For one to two minutes, you won't hear it anymore. You will be perfectly fine ignoring it and talking over it, falling asleep to it. But if you have a dripping faucet in your bedroom, you won't go to sleep unless you're completely sleep deprived. It's just gonna drip. And 
and you're just gonna wait for that next drop to come and that's what you can use make your audience crave for that next note for that next lick you play let them wait let them imagine what's gonna come next keep that suspense up number 10 pattern interruption this is one of my favorite hacks i use it all the time and it can be really useful if you want some extra attention on your solo so for example if you play really quiet smooth solo throw in some really loud notes loud notes loud notes in there play something unexpected if you play something melodic hum, really harmonious throw in some outside lines in there and make the audience wake up have them go like, what's going on? What just happened? What's he doing? I don't get it. Surprise them. Keep them on your toes. That's what gets their focus right back on you. And they'll stay there. All right. These were my top 10 bass solo hacks. I hope you get something out of them. Let me know how it goes. And I'll see you next week. Love and bass. By the way, if you enjoyed this video, I've got a new one coming up on YouTube every single week. So subscribe to this channel or go all in. Book a free trial lesson with the link in the description. Looking forward to meeting you. Love and base.